my front yard garden bed. I don't have much of a front yard. It's probably about 15 feet. It's not very wide, but um, it's uh, sizable, about 36 feet by 10 foot. What you're looking at there is Jerusalem artichoke. And I showed in another video how short they are due to the drought. I, I supplemental water, but not enough to actually, like just enough to keep them alive so I don't you know, lose the, the, the ability to have uh, seeds next year uh, or plants next year if it's a perennial. You can see these, this foot fence is about six foot high. These are roughly three foot high. But we've been getting a lot of rain. So much rain that the 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 way this bed is built, there, it, it, there's a berm here that stops the rain. That it's actually causing these these pots don't have any bottoms. It's actually causing water to to be pushed up and out of the pot. It's 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 it's, it's really nice to have this much rain for a change. So I'm not going to do too much with the, the pots here in the front. This is mostly stuff given as gifts, sentimental. Uh, they're roses, um, little, little, little flowers. There's some value to having them. Uh, they're, they're, and, and if you're going to do something like this, you know, set aside some space for yourself just to have some fun. So what I've done with this garden bed is it's, it's actually higher elevation at the back of the garden bed, and I've basically scooped the dirt out and brought it back and mounted it up here to make it higher than back there and then backfilled it with my own compost and planted Jerusalem artichokes inside there's actually ginger in there I don't know if it, you can see it it's actually there it actually grew pretty well here and then we planted things in the berm oregano peppermint and this peppermint actually at one time was in here like carpet, but this the drought this year, it died back to just these few little bits. But if we get more uh, water, more rain, it should fill back in. It's, it, it grows fairly quickly. We have lemon balm over here, and all the lemon balm on the property died back. And it, it does that, and then we get rain, and it, it comes back, and it, it gets huge. And we do have actually lemon balm that's spread up in there, and we just largely leave it. Comfrey, the Bocking 14 Comfrey. And we have a pepper plant here. I just don't remember what type it is. I believe it's 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 a gift uh, a, from uh, my mother-in-law. Uh, they they went to Mexico and got some heritage uh, peppers, and we and we we grew them. Well, not Mexico, El Paso. Sorry. And we have this dill plant we've had for years. And this year it's just grown so weird. It's alive. There's <laughs> barely. Let's see if we get little leaves. It still has green leaves and it still sends them out, but it just keeps looking like this. And I haven't seen it do that before, but the good news is with all the rain and the cooler temperatures, it's got new growth. And it has died back before and, and come back. I just think the dieback's just more severe this year. So it probably won't die. It's barely clinging to life, but there's a peppermint there and wild strawberry. This may be the woodland, one of the woodland strawberries. The, the center spike, eh, it's probably common. The center spike at the tip of the leaf on a woodland strawberry is longer uh, than the other two spikes around it. So it's probably just a common strawberry. Yeah. And it's, it, it spreads pretty nicely up here. It grows better than the, uh, the peppermint for sure. And the rosemary. Now, in a, uh, my first video that I have on this channel, there is an enormous rosemary, and it went back to that fence and all the way down to the, to the edge of the garden bed, which is approximately five feet away. You can see the trunk. It was very old, and it didn't die because of drought or cold. It died because of old age. It was 15, 16 years old, and plants have a, um, a lifespan. And it, it, it died. So we knew it was coming about two or three years ago. So what we did is these branches that were low to the ground and grew along the ground, we would, we would put dirt uh, on top of it. And it caused it to root. 
and as a result we've got several offshoots of this plant that were propagated in that fashion here on the edge of the bed a uh, little one right here probably should get this hose off of it and the hose is up here largely this bed doesn't really need very much water but I have potted plants in the back that I use the water hose for mostly I did have to do some supplemental watering even the Jerusalem artichokes which are really drought, drought tolerant needed some help this year and another rosemary so eventually we'll have all the we, we still have all the rosemary we want for our own consumption but we'll, we'll have uh, more rosemary than when we started from that death so and this is actually a commercial strawberry um, propagated off the one that I showed in my uh, video for the uh, the pond south bed I, I that partic that strawberry back there sent a little runner off and rooted um, I dug that up and ha have it in a pot I'll show that potted version because I put in some rich soil sent its own runner out while it was setting here and that that little runner rooted there I snipped that so now I have it here and still in the pot and that's how I propagate even my wild strawberries uh, it's, it's a real easy way to do it put a few in the pots like that and then move them around as they, they send out those, those little runners. I don't know what the technical term for, for that is, but you know what they are. And a tomato. Just This is mainly just growing for seed, just so I can, it will produce fruit probably near September, late September, and I'll collect it and save the seed in, for next year. And I, I do that. Uh, if I have a place to stuff an extra tomato, I'll stuff it in there and, and not really grow it for 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 food but for for seed production we have some chives that that manage to get themselves over here uh, you gotta be careful with 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 chives they, they will go invasive but if you eat eat them humans are great at making things go extinct so if you're on top of it you won't really have to worry about it and what you see in the ground so when this died back um, I, w I had no plans to do anything with this side of the bed because it was all just rosemary everything you see here so now that we've got room, I had some extra uh, crops that I sprouted. This is, I think it's all charred. Yes, it is. All these are charred, every one of them. And they, they seem to be pretty winter hardy, and they, they didn't need uh, very much supplemental water, just enough to get started when I first put them in the ground, because I put them in late in the season. And this is one of the few places that the ground cherries thrived. And I think that's largely because it gets glancing rays. It, it misses all the noon sun. It's one of the best places for sunlight on my property. I mentioned that my property is not very well situated. It's not, it's not ideal uh, for growing. But when, you have a, when you're doing a suburban or urban yard, you, you have to use what you have. So. And we have a, another, this is a chili pequina in the pot. And then I have four of them back there. Th this guy is a winner. If you're if you want peppers you know, and you and you want a low water usage and you want them to live over winter, <laughs> go go with this chili pekin or chiltepin and I'll, I'll show some of those uh, chiltepins in a second. Um, what you see here in a pot is curry. Um, I'll have to put the genus and species in the description. I might put some information on some of this stuff in the description. Um, I've had this for three or four years. This is like a, a, a large shrub, small tree in its, its native zone. It can't get below 40 degrees or it's going to probably die. Uh, why do I grow this? Because I like Indian cuisine. <laughs> and um, if you keep it above 40 degrees it, and, you, and you give it some glancing, glancing sun, you don't let it, like morning sun or, you, or evening sun, do it. None, none of the, the hot noon sun during the main summer months, and it, and it does take a decent amount of water, but it's really not that terrible on water. Uh, then it, it grows really well here. Let's see if there's anything I'm missing. So I haven't done a video on it, but I have native blackberry um, here. And th this is propagated off the actual larger one I have. I'll show it in the, in the video. And then, like I do with the strawberries, I'll set them down, and they will root into the ground, and they will send out, if, if they're, like this one has, it's rooted. If, if its stem makes contact with the soil, it'll root. And this does have thorns, and it's harder to harvest than the, 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 
the uh, thornless uh, blackberry that I have, but um, it, it grows with almost no water. So, and it produces fruit with almost no water. It's one of the few things that produced fruit this year. What was, and it's the natives, you know, they're, they're designed for it. It makes sense. So, Chiltepin peppers. So the chili pequins are red, and these are orangish. See if you can see it. I'm trying to, yeah, you can see it down in there, that little orange dot. It's not focusing very well. And I've got six of them. There's four here. The other two are in the pot garden. <laughs> but um, I, I think, yeah, this is the second time I've tried these, and this is the best that I've done. I don't remember where I got them. We'll see the jury's out. We'll see. They haven't uh, been around as long as the chili, and they haven't propagated themselves like the chili pekins did. So I don't know what if, if I can say that they're as good, but they certainly did okay with very little water. So I have high hopes. Now I've tried experiments with East Texas natives, uh, Eastern United States, Appalachia, in different environments to see if they work here. Haven't had a lot of luck. Um, I had pawpaws in one video. I've had walnuts, uh, black cherry. Uh, hickory, um, hazelnuts, uh, several others. This is the lone surviving hickory. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. My idea was that I might have a little stand of some of these types of plants here in the Cross Timbers uh, little suburban farm that I might take air layerings and cuttings from, propagate, and then take to my East Texas location. But uh, the, the, it's very. I'm, I'm not having much luck growing those plants here. Except for black cherry and walnut, they do pretty well. And I'll probably get uh, Arizona walnut. Right, right now I have the, uh, I don't know the genus and species offhand. But uh, those did pretty well. Um, I might have another couple uh, East Texas or, or Eastern United States types plants that, that did well, but offhand I don't remember. Let's see. And then there's that commercial strawberry I mentioned in a pot that I move around. And it's dormant, and I mentioned there's some, I'll, I'll try to show them when they come out, I hope they make it, but I have native onions, and I have uh, some uh, d domesticated garlic that, that grows on its own, and it's this time of the year it's dormant, but there's some of that in here. Um, there's one of the sorrel I mentioned in my pond so uh, south bed video that's still alive on the property. There was one right next to it that lived almost till the end of the summer, but it officially died. But this is seeded, but none of the seeds have, um, you know, self-seeded. When I do annuals, I haven't put a lot of energy into that yet, but, you know, when I do annuals, one of the requirements, if it's going to be a, a crop that I want to grow, is going to be that it can self-seed. So, what you see here in pots are gifts from my father. Those are, uh, I think those are eastern red cedar. Let's see here. And I don't make a lot of mention of this, but... This is not grass. This is cedar sedge. So I, I don't point out everything that's growing everywhere, but because um, if it isn't necessarily edible, you know, I'm thinking some folks may not be interested in it. But all of it, I think, actually matters because it all grows together. Yeah, you, you have to grow things that get along. And and I also don't want to just advocate for just eradicating what's there. So I, I always try to leave, and, and, or at least not disturb as much as possible. There's some blue flowers that I, I think I have in another video on the back line. I'm just thrilled about those. Okay. And these are curry starts. These are around a year old, I think. And I've got more started, about 50 or so. And this is the muscadine grape that uh, my father gave me. And there's horse herb. And some native grasses. I may do do something on some native grasses. There, I have a little blue stem in here, uh, right there. And um, of course, there's prairie tea. That should cover it. As you see, I mentioned that uh, a lot of my beds are um, there's a, there's a lot of space left that I could cram things. So we'll see we'll see what I do. Realized I had forgotten something, and I use these videos for my documentation as well. And there it is, right below these chiltepins. 
wild strawberry. I know it's just one item, but I also remembered I uh, forgot to mention that I was talking about self-seeding when I was talking about this sorrel, and uh, it made it seem like it. it, it uh, I was talking about my requirements for annuals have to be able to self-seed. Um, well, this particular plant is actually a perennial, but the same rule applies for all, pretty much all plants. They have to, they have to be able to propagate themselves, or it's not really a crop that I am all that interested in growing. 